In this video, we're gonna show you how to use Google Calendar to create a classroom schedule that you can use all year round to help communicate with your parents. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Mr. Cook's Corner, Education for Educators. This channel's all about helping teachers like you grow in your craft. If it's your first time watching, welcome aboard. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell if you like what you see today. Okay, we all use Google Calendar in one way or shape or form. I know I have four or five of my own calendars for family, friends, personal use, but at school it comes in useful in many different ways. We have a staff calendar, we also have them with our teachers and our students as a classroom calendar. Today I want to show you how to create a class schedule Google Calendar that you can use whenever you want to communicate to your parents what homework, what assignments have been done, anything like that that you need to just blast out super quickly. That way your parents on mobile will have access to it and can get to it within the snap of a finger. Before we get started, just a quick disclaimer, we're not trying to replace Google Classroom. That's the best functional place to have all of your assignments, posts, attachments, all the things that you're used to linking, we're gonna keep that. This Google Calendar is specifically for parents to have a quick access on their phones or on their laptops to look at the things that you've been doing day to day. It's almost like a daily communication log. So without further ado, let's go take a look at how to do this. So we're gonna start here with a generic class schedule for the year. This is for 2021-22. Um, I pulled this from one of my classes at my school and we are going to use these times to create a Google Calendar schedule that is gonna be chock full of information for students and parents. It's gonna be a good reference point that they can use on their phones. You can import it into your Google Sites. So let's go ahead and hop over to the calendar. So here we are at the Google Calendar main page and on the left-hand side, you can always see what calendars you have currently going. This is just a trainer account for me. That's why it's blank, even though I have lots of calendars checked. But the first step right now is to just uncheck all the calendars while you start building this out, because if you have them turned on, they're gonna get in the way. So first thing, uncheck everything. Once you've done that, you're gonna to need to add a new calendar and it's just a little plus button next to other calendars. You're just gonna click on create new calendar. And once you've given it a name, you really don't need to add a description. People who are using it are going to know what it's for. You do want to make sure your time zone's correct though. So for me, I'm in the central time zone. And then when you're set, you just click create. On the left hand side, it says settings for my calendars. You're going to want to do that now just to get it out of the way. So go ahead and click on your calendar. Now I'm not going to go through every single setting on here, but I do want to show you a couple important ones. The first one is whether or not you want to make it available to the public. I usually leave that off because it becomes searchable by other people and the easier way to do it to give the link to your parents is just to use the button below it. So whenever you're ready to share, there's a button here in the settings called get shareable link. When you click on it, you could just copy that link and send it out. That's if you're not going to embed it in a Google site or another website of your choosing. If it's just something you want to share with your parents via email so they can pop it up on their phones, on their mobiles, this is the way to do it. Right below that is share with specific people and it's just like every other Google Calendar sharing. This is just for people you want to edit the calendar as well. So teammates is what I'm thinking in mind or if you're an admin, you know, other people in the office staff with you. And the last one that we're going to use a little bit later is the embed code. It's right here under integrate calendar. When we embed this in a Google site, this is the code that we're gonna copy and paste. So just so you know, it's in the settings under this calendar, scroll to the bottom under integrate calendar. It's gonna be right there under embed code. Okay, we're back at the home page, and now we're going to start adding in the different classes that make up our schedule for the year. As a reminder, we're basing it off of this schedule right here. I'm not gonna put in morning circle or pack up time. I'm just gonna stick to the main blocks of academic content. So my first one would be language arts. 99% of you guys have made calendar events before, so I'm not gonna do a deep dive into this, but we do want to focus on the things that make this functional. So let's take a look at the first block. I've already given it a name and the time frame. It's from 8 to 9.30, it's called Language Arts. What we wanna do first is under Does Not Repeat, we wanna change that and make it every weekday. So now it's gonna be a recurring event that shows up every single weekday on the calendar. The second thing we wanna notice is the event color. This is completely up to you. You could have every single class be the same color. However, I personally like to make every single class a different color so you can visually see the difference in the times of your academic day. And when we're all done, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. 
The last box is what makes this so powerful. It's the add description box. And now you can type in this every single day something different. So this is where the parents are going to see what your assignments are, what you worked on, what homework there is, anything that you wanna type in there, it will be different each day. It even has a button here for attachments. So if you wanna insert a PDF or an assignment, you're free to do that as well. One thing about this description box is I don't wanna type in it yet because I have to save the calendar and set up the recurring theme. If I type in it now, then hit save, it's gonna put the same thing that I typed into every single date. So I'm gonna leave it blank for now and I'm just gonna hit save. Now you can see that since I created it on a Thursday, it's gonna do every weekday beyond that day. That's why Monday the 9th through the 11th, they're not shown. If I view it as a month view, you'll see that it's every single weekday. We're gonna do it one more time together super quickly. You click in the space, give it a name and a time frame. click on does not repeat and change that to every weekday, and then give it a color of your choosing. For me, like I said, I wanted a different color. And once you've hit save, you can now see that I've added in my second class. I'm gonna use the magic of editing to send us right to a finished product. Okay, and now we have a finished class schedule here, each with a different color, and hopefully now you can see why using different colors for each class is a little bit more appealing. You can definitely see the definition of when things are happening throughout the day, as opposed to being monotone with one color. As I click through the weeks, you'll see that they're all set up. When I look at the month view, you can see the same thing. Although the month view to me is not too great. My personal favorite is schedule. This way you can hover over something and just click on it and it'll give you the information that you need. I really like this as well as the week view, but again, you're free to choose how you wanna do it. Okay, so here's where the usefulness comes into play. You can go into each individual class now and start typing in the description box what's been going on and what needs to be done. Once you get in a habit of doing this and training your parents to check this every day, it's really the easiest way for them to take a look at what's going on in your class and for you guys to be in constant communication with one another. So let's use an example. Let's say the first day of school, you want to do an all about me project in language arts. You want them to work on that a little bit at home. So we're gonna go to that first day of school on the 12th and we're gonna double click under language arts. And here in the description, we're gonna type all the necessary information. So I keep it really simple because I don't wanna give myself extra work to be doing after the school bell rings. I just make it super quick. It takes me five minutes a day. I just put what we did for the day and then what the homework is or isn't. Here's the important part. When you're done and you click save, you want to make sure you just click on this event. Because if you do this in following events or you do all events, what I just typed is going to show up on every other event in the calendar. So make sure you keep it at this event. Now when we're done and we click on the event, you can see now the assignments that we did. They don't even have to double click to open it. It's listed there front and center for them. If I go to the next day and click on it, it doesn't say anything because we only saved this event. Now we've got a daily clickable schedule ready to go. When you get to the end of the school year here, we can see May 27th and you're ready to just delete the calendar for the summer heading into the next year. All you do is go to an event on that last day and double click it click on more actions, click on delete, and then you're gonna do all events. You're gonna click all events and hit okay. Now it's time to get it to your parents and I'm gonna show you again two ways. We're gonna email it so they can import it into their phone and we're gonna embed it into a Google site. The first thing you gotta do though is click on the settings gear in the top and go down to settings. When you do click settings, this is for all your calendars. So you do have to go to the left hand side and find the specific calendar that you want. So in this case, Mr. Cook's class 2021-22, I'm gonna click on that. Now we're in our specific calendar. To share it via email or message, you can copy it into a remind message if you use that platform or however you send it out, you just go to get shareable link. And then from there, copy the link. Once it's on your clipboard, you're just gonna paste it into your email or whatever message system you're using, blast it out. Parents will click on that link and they can add that calendar to their Google. If you're using a Google site or a website of your choice that allows embedding, you're gonna go down to the embed code and you're gonna highlight everything and you're gonna copy it. Now let's go paste it in. Okay, here I am in one of the pages of a generic Google Sites. If you wanna learn about Google Sites, I'm gonna plug my brand new course. It's Google Sites 101. I can teach you how to be up and running and a master at this in less than two hours. The link is in the description. 
please check it out. I promise you, if you enjoy what I'm doing with you every week on the YouTube channel, you're gonna have a lot of fun making a Google site with me. Okay, once you're here, you're going to go to insert and you're gonna hit that embed button. It's right there on the right hand side. If you use something other than Google Sites, they have that option as well. If you're using some sort of site builder or if your school district is assigning something to you, they are gonna have that available to you. So you just need to find wherever the embed button is. And then here, I'm not gonna click on the URL, I wanna use the code. So I'm gonna click on code and then it says code goes here and I'm just gonna paste. And I hit insert and there we are. From here, I just wanna maximize the size of it so the whole calendar fits. So as you see, you kind of drag it out and then I'm gonna drag it down. That looks about right, and I'm just gonna center it. This is just aesthetics more than anything else. Now your students and parents can go to your Google site and go to the day of August. Here it is, and they can change the view. So the default is month view, but they can just click on week. They can head to the correct week. Unfortunately, it looks like the colors don't, co don't translate over. That's super unfortunate, but if parents are opening that up in their own Google Calendar, it will translate the colors. However, they can double click and just from their Google site, look, they can click on these and they can see what the information is. So like we did in language arts, there's the description. It's right there. It's super easy. You were all set and ready to go. Hey, you watch more videos, huh?